I think an esports program at the school should involve not just the academic side, but the club side, the casual side, and the varsity side, all kind of working together towards one common goal, which is empowering the student body through esports and gaming. You don't need a buzzer beater, and Drexel <laughs> walks away with their third victory in this best of five series. I think that Drexel esports has something for everyone. Every school can provide that come meet other people at your school that play the same game. Drexel esports can also provide a home for legitimate competitive experience to be fostered. Drexel University, they will complete the upset. They will prove not only to us, but to every single person watching that they are not just an underdog. We're a lot more recognizable on campus and off campus. So many people know our name now. Demons in such a great spot and they're not aware. They don't know Drexel. They pick up the round and they pick up the win. I take a lot of pride in building this project that we have here. Counter-Strike may not be the biggest collegiate esport, but maybe Rocket League is bigger or League or Splatoon or whatever it is, Drexel Esports has it. Just for a record, do you want to say what your name is and what exactly you do for the Esports Club? Yeah, so hi, I'm Claire. I'm president of Drexel Esports. I'm going to school for software engineering, and esports is kind of like my my five to nine, while software engineering is my nine to five. When I came to Drexel, I uh, started out on the Overwatch team as a freshman, and back then we were part of an org called Desga, which was Drexel Esports and Gaming Association. Uh, we then split into Drexel Esports and DGA. So the split kind of allowed us to focus exclusively on esports. We don't really have to worry too much about community events and, and catering towards a more casual side of gaming at Drexel. Uh, we can focus entirely on competition and building this esports org and not having to focus on anything else, which has been uh, super nice. We have nine games and they all vary in how many teams that they have. And we also have an individual player sponsorship program as well. So players from lesser known titles can compete in esports without needing a team. Our teams were even like outperforming in uh, while we were still in DGA. So uh, we have a lot of accomplishments. Um, I would say Overwatch team has done really well, especially at lands. And I think they placed top 16 in uh, Collegiate Overwatch this year, which has been really nice. Rocket League has won, taken a couple of tournaments, got a few trophies. CSGO is obviously our most decorated team uh, with two national championships and they're still performing super well. Welcome on in, folks. It has been a long season, but we have finally made it. It's the NACE Star League Grand Finals, and we're hopping straight on into CSGO, two fantastic teams that have been battling their way through the entire season to make it here. I think at the time, you know, we definitely weren't considering winning the whole thing. The first time we won that national title, it was around the same time when like schools like Davenport were coming around and starting to introduce much bigger, you know, wider scale programs that really uh, you know, dumped a lot more money into it. So uh, it kind of painted this like David versus Goliath picture for us where, you know, if we were going to try to make those like pipe dreams a reality, we were going to have to take down realistically a very, very solid team. There was definitely a different level um, once we knew we were playing Davenport in that final. Nobody had upset them in the upper bracket. They were there the entire time. For Davenport, they are a team that has looked dominant. They have not dropped a single map th throughout the qualification to get here through the regular season bracket play. Not a single map with regard to the playoffs either. This yeah. has been phenomenal. It's really been easy with Davenport. To be fair, Davenport, they've already had some victories this season, but uh, you know, an additional 5k on top of that uh, is definitely going to look nice if they can pick that up. And I remember walking around one night talking with like uh, I think it was James, my coach, and like one more player on the team. And just like what if, what if tomorrow we beat Davenport? Wouldn't that be so funny? Like all of them are tweeting about how they're about to take this national title home and how 100% tomorrow is going to be the day and uh I just think it would be so funny to just make that not happen. Like, not out of spite, not out of, you know, any hatred towards them. They're really good players and we're friends with a lot of them. But uh, just, you know, pinch of overconfidence maybe. Uh, we can knock that down a bit, that kind of feeling. Well, folks, we made you wait just a second, but the game is about to get underway. It's a nice Starly Grand Finals here for CSGO. It's Drexel Davenport starting off. It's Drexel on the CT side looking to get something done. Coming into that first map, I was having like the worst performance I had, I think, the entire season on both the first and the first half of the second map. Nova is so worried about every single angle. The flashes continue to rain on in, and he'll swing, misses the shot, and that should be the end of it. Slow-mo had the AK. 
The pinch comes through and directs Souls round. Well, it stays at one. No streak to be garnered for him. Sneak his way in. This player on the site can't go overcome the first of those players. And that's map number one going to Davenport in dominant fashion. Uh, up until the second half, there was never a situation where Drexel even got two rounds in a row. Now we head into a map that is even stronger for Davenport. I mean, Drexel needs to change something. There were some concerns <laughs> going into that second map, but I think everyone just woke up and uh, did our jobs. And I think that being the underdog gave us the ability to bounce back off of that first loss, refocus on, you know, hey, Let's see what happens. There's no pressure on us. Why not make the se second map upset? Why not go in to take it to a third map and win it there too? Nova takes a second one. Now the flash forward arcade oh. is not clear. Misses the no. shot. Surely not. Nova pivots 180, finds it. This is a team dismantled. They are falling apart. Slow motion alone. It is a flawless round. Zach, what has happened to the Davenport we know? The championship on the line. David swinging forward, misses out on his shot, but that's the information. Nova has it. And there's just no HP left. Nova will clean up Drexel University. They will complete the upset. They will prove not only to us, but to every single person watching that they are not just an underdog. It doesn't matter if they practice. It doesn't matter what time they put in because they just have the raw skill to take down any squad. I think after we won that first title against Davenport, people kind of started turning their heads a little bit and being like, wait, who are these guys? You know, this Counter-Strike team, we didn't really expect them to do anything, but all of a sudden we have a title coming home to Drexel, a big trophy coming back to our, you know, non-existent trophy cabinet, but you know. When I first stepped in as VP, um, they like just won. So it was all kind of just, I come into this position and like, oh my God, they're the national champions. What the heck do we do? Um, thankfully, we kind of had a second opportunity with their um, second championship. So we were able to promote the match a lot more. We were able to make a lot more content for them as a team. We also had to negotiate the $10,000 that they won with the university uh, because they wouldn't give the money directly to them. Um, that was like six months of negotiation and I was really passionate about giving our players their prize money that they won entirely on their own. We did not support them at all. We did not have coaches for them. They just went out on their own and did something like that. Before we won our first title, I would say that, you know, esports as a whole at Drexel was a little bit more muted as far as impact within the school. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of club stuff, a lot of like, you know, um, fun land parties and stuff like that. But I think that the more like pro competitive uh, side of esports at Drexel wasn't necessarily being nurtured fully. Um, but I think through our win, we've been able to talk to some bigger people at our, at our school, um, you know, take it up the, the chain of command a little bit and even talk to, um, you know, the, uh, the president of our school and talk about how esports can fit in here at Drexel and how it can, you know, act as a pathway for, for students to both pursue their, their passion in life while also pursuing their degree. We kind of have to fill in a lot of gaps, especially as a brand new uh, club sport. So things like jerseys weren't in place, we didn't have a logo, we didn't have an esports room. Um, we just needed a lot of organization to kind of happen within the club and also a marketing team as well. So we uh, worked on forming a lot of those aspects. We've been asking for a space for ever since we pretty much existed, and uh, thankfully Drexel has an esports business um, department uh, led by one awesome professor, Mr. Levine, and he kind of hooked us up with the Lebeau um, facilities people, and they were like, hey, we have this unused call center that's been abandoned since COVID started. Uh, would you like to, I guess, use it? And we said, obviously, yes. Um, and, you know, we're still gaming out of cubicles, but <laughs> um, it's perfectly fine for us. It has ethernet, um, it has space, and it's somewhere where we can just, you know, keep, it's our home base pretty much, a physical home base, and that's all we really wanted, so. If we're doing in-person things, um, we usually try and see if we can get a stream going, um, try and promote it on our socials a lot. And now that we have a stream team and production team that we like just hired, uh, we're finally able to do like full production, casting, um, and like all the cool transitions that you see that I don't know how they work, but we have them now and it's uh, super awesome. So we have people in here uh, usually working on the production stuff as well. And Drexel is trying to hold it. And right away, we just have a goal here. 
Wow, really quick right off the bat after the kickoff, just showing that offensive prowess that you were talking about. Has that like opened up any kind of like opportunities for you guys? Does it give you more flexibility that you maybe didn't have before? In yeah, areas? absolutely. Um, so first off, things don't have to get stored in my dorm, which is really awesome. Um, and people can, you know, mail us stuff, mail us equipment. Uh, if players have a PC at home that isn't working or something happens to their own setup, they can come here and play. Um, our setups are relatively on the higher end, I would say. They have 3080s in them, which, you know, it makes it gets the job done. So if any companies want to get their own equipment in here, we could say, hey, we have a facility. Would you guys like to sponsor it? So. Getting sponsors, has that been like all you? Like what's the, what's the process of doing that? It's very difficult as a club org because people want their sponsorship to be associated with the university, not a club at a school. Um, so we haven't had anything permanent yet. Um, we've had Be Real partner with us, which has been pretty helpful. Um, we have MSI and Corsair like occasionally send us stuff through their student promo packages. Um, but we haven't had any solid sponsors yet, and that's something we're still trying to work on. Wait, how are you in the lobby already? Do you want an invite to the lobby? Because I followed the instructions that I added Dragon 4 hashtag 116. Oh. You didn't read the directions? You didn't read There's the no directions. directions. It has them. No. Can we disqualify this kid? I would say the one thing that hasn't changed has been the players themselves. Our players have been super consistent with, you know, numbers showing up. Uh, performing super well, which has been made my job super, super fun and easy. And a strong game lead, we've been really fortunate to have for all of our titles, and I'm super grateful for them. I wish we could recognize the more uh, positions in Drexel Esports because we as directors don't handle any of the scheduling, the coaching, the player dynamics um, on that low level, team by team, they do. And without them, our organization would crumble, pretty much. And I would say what has changed is we're a lot more recognizable on campus and off campus. Um, so many people know our name now because we've kind of fleshed out a really good marketing team and stream team. Um, and our players, we're trying to give them resources to branch out more and join more competitions and uh, make themselves known. Just because we're the ones playing and earning the title in the server doesn't mean we're the only ones that are actually earning that title. You know, uh, Claire and, and everyone on the, on the staff puts in so much work towards, you know, further spreading out the, the Drexel name, you know, in the community and uh, talking to the, the people, the higher-ups of the school to allow us to have more opportunities to play, you know, getting this eSports facility set up. Like, if that, if that ever, you know, becomes something that my team needs, and I know that it's something that a lot of other teams use, like, that, that being here, it's just like a, a crazy, another opportunity that is added by the, the leadership change-up, and I think it's all been very positive. I honestly don't have any complaints with the current leadership whatsoever. We did a media day a while back, uh, which is just like an extra fun thing like for the players and, and you know, allows the social media to, to develop further. And uh, I think like the further legitimizing of everything, is it's just a lot of fun to see, I don't know. The guy behind the arm, I can't really see. Team can't oh, there see. we go. No, no, pick your arm up. Right, perfect, perfect. My favorite part about Drexel Esports has got to be, mm, okay, this is a loaded question. <laughs> um, I would say how, great everyone works even under the current conditions we have you know like we don't have this glamorous facility people still want to come out and play people still you know respect us respect each other um, and people still perform well and everyone's just really grateful for all like the little opportunities we get um, and everyone's been super considerate and uh, overall the community is just amazing I couldn't ask for a better community I mean everyone lives together like we all go and eat together we watch shows together we party together um, everyone on the team is just super close um, and you know I'm like so grateful for that relationship to be able to have that close of a friendship with you know these people who you know coming into my freshman year um, I had some friends but ne not necessarily such a, a well-rounded and, and you know comforting friend group as they provided so um, you know I'm, I'm very very grateful to each of my teammates for giving me that kind of support when I need it and vice versa I've only been to a few of the the LAN parties and stuff like that but every time that I've been I mean, they've just been a blast. Like the the side tournaments, I get to play a little bit of Smash Bros, which I never really touch. Outside of that, um, you know, the the giveaways are cool just to bring people in. Uh, there's like costume contests and stuff like that. So that kind of aspect of things is really cool. But I think uh, if there's one thing that I would not want to replace, no matter what, it's just the sense of family that I get from my teammates on the the Counter Strike team. What advice do you have for uh, other student leaders in co college, collegiate esports and possibly for someone that might be taking up your position in the future? Mm -hmm. Be aggressive. <laughs> uh, being aggressive is 
kind of the way you have to get things done if administration just isn't listening to you or um, something's just taking way too long to happen. Um, I've kind of had to learn, I, I'm usually very quiet and very like, you know, oh, let's just see how that goes. But also, if something that needs to get done doesn't get done, sometimes you just need to put your foot down, try other avenues, take opportunities, and sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. So, yeah. What's going on, everybody? Los here, and we got another aficionado, a affiliate, a member of Drexel University in the eSports program. Joining me is Claire and Zoomy. Zoomy. Yes, Zoomy. I knew it. I knew it. I knew what it was. This is a, a very passionate group, but it's also student run. Could you yes. tell me about that? Yeah, so we were founded in spring of 2021, so we're a little under two years old. We have 120 players, nine teams, and it's just been pure chaos and fun uh, building our org and kind of starting it from scratch. Where do you want to see the Drexel Esports program going in the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Drexel already has plans, I guess. The university has plans to create a varsity esports program. Um, and I'd like to see that varsity esports program kind of work in tandem with the club sports program. Um, I know that Drexel's goal might be to just only really support and build up this varsity program. Um, so I'm trying to influence how that program is being built because I think an esports program at the school should involve not just the academic side, but the club side, the casual side, and the varsity side, um, all kind of working together towards one common goal, which is you know empowering the student body through esports and gaming. You know, I'm very proud of how far we've been able to come considering the lack of resources that we have. When you make national champions, you can do it again, and we did do it again. And when you do it twice, we can definitely do it a third time. And as much as the resources that might be available at other schools are much greater than what Drexel can provide us, you know, I take a lot of pride in building this project that we have here. I trust that, you know, my school, my team, my teammates are able to get it over the line um, enough that it wouldn't be worth making such a drastic change over. I do hope that one day, you know, if, if the Drexel Counter-Strike team and other Drexel esports competitors you know, continue to prove that they deserve it, that there can be some kind of uh, potential for even further support to those players. Um, whether that's going to happen while I'm still at the school or not, you know, time will tell. But, um, you know, the more that we can provide support for these players, you know, to pursue their dreams, I think is like, that's paramount. I'm trying to influence how it's being built in a way where they don't neglect um, important aspects such as the community because you, know, you can bring home as many trophies and recruit as many high-level players as you can, but at the end of the day, you are a university, you are a school, you have you know, 500, 600 students here interested in gaming and esports, and you know, are you working for them or are you working for these players that you just you know, recruited and want to come and you know, bring trophies and prize money? You know? So uh, making sure Drexel includes you know, us and the students in you know, catering towards what we do best.